Good morning, good morning. Welcome to CCTV Night Watchman. Chris speaking. Now check this out. You know I like weird stuff, so my brother sends me this picture on Facebook. I don't think this is a moon in front of clouds. And I've learned a lot about star shades, so <clears throat> you guys have heard China, China making their own practice moon. Got their practice moon going on, you know. So now what I'm doing right now with the uh, forensic tool I have <clears throat> is I'm looking at the cloning. I was looking at the magnification contrast. This cloning device right here shows you objects in the sky that you can't even see that are alike. And so the more sensitive I make it, the more objects I pick up. Um, so I'm doing that just to see if there's any, I mean, two rocks cannot be the same. So this thing could pick up uh, the rock size or spaceship size or the UFO size, or whatever the thing's happening out there, but you see it, it's got a number of objects that look the same. Okay, and the red lines point to each one. Now, if we go around, I could actually go around and, and really sophisticatedly blow them up and look at them, but I know there are anything from rocks to, um, they're not birds, they're UFOs or planes or satellites or something that's making this light that looks like it's in front of a cloud. Okay, so keep watching. It gets weird. I'm going to show you some star shade stuff. And I'm going to show you that pedal again from the other day. I'll show it to you real quickly right now. And then I'm going to show you star shade, all right? So stay awake. Hit the like button. Subscribe. That thing is weird. Well, first of all, we want to find the planets like Earth first. Like, just even finding those Earth-like planets is a billion-dollar endeavor, billions of dollars endeavor. And that's so hard because an Earth is so small, so less massive, and so faint compared to our sun. It's the proverbial needle in a haystack, but worse. And we need very sophisticated space-based telescopes to be able to find these planets and to look look at them and see which ones have water and which ones have signs of life on them. Yeah, the the Starshade project that you're part Starshade. of. Starshade. Starshade, yeah. This probably the most badass thing I've ever seen. Right. <laughs> you know what's interesting <laughs> Can you is, describe yeah, what it is first off? Starshade. So what's amazing about Starshade is it was first conceived of in the 1960s. Hmm. Imagine that and revisit it every decade until now when we think we can actually build it. And Starshade is a giant specially shaped screen. It is about, there's different versions of it, but think about 30 meters in diameter. So you're blocking out the sun. You're effectively blocking out the star. Yeah. So that you can see the planet directly. And Starshade would have a spacecraft attached to it and it would fly in space far away from Earth's gravity. And it would have to formation fly with a space telescope. So the idea is that Starshade blocks out the starlight in a very careful way. And it has to block that starlight out so that the planet that is 10 billion times fainter than the star, that only the planet light goes to the telescope. Yeah, so in formation, meaning the telescope flies in, um, you've given a presentation on this, but like it, it, it would fly like in, um, this, this is extremely high precision endeavor. Yeah, we had this analogy, like asking a friend to hold up a dime five miles away, yeah. perfectly, like at the perfect line of sight with you. Yeah. <laughs> and the shape of it is pretty cool. I mean, uh, I don't know exactly what the physics of that, like what the optics are that require that shape. I can tell you. It turns out that if you block out a star, imagine blocking out a star with a circul circularly or a square shaped screen. You wouldn't actually be blocking it because the star acts like a wave. The starlight can act like a wave and it would actually bend around the edges of the screen. And so instead of blocking out the light, you're expecting to see nothing. You would see ripples. Hmm. And the analogy that I love to give, it's like throwing a pebble in a pond. You know, you get those ripples, you get these concentric ripples and they go out and light would do something quite similar. You'd actually see ripples of light. And those ripples of light, they're actually way brighter than the planet we'd be looking for. <laughs> so, okay, so they can't would put introduce this noise that's- uh... Yeah, noise. And so this star shade, it's like a mathematical solution to the problem of diffraction, it's called. 
And this is what the first person who thought about star shape in the 1960s worked out, the mathematical shape, or one solu- one family of solutions. And the idea is that when the star shape, this very special shape like a giant flower with petals, when it blocks out the light, the light bends around the edges but interacts with itself in a way to give you a very, very dark image. It would be like throwing a pebble in a pond. And instead of getting ripples, the pond would be perfectly smooth, like incredibly smooth to one part in 10 billion. And all the waves would be on the outer edges, far away from where you drop that pedal, pebble. And so this camera would be able to, oh, this camera, this telescope would be able to get uh, get some signal from the planet then. Yes, and it would be hard because the planet is so faint. But with the star out of the way, the glare of that bright, bright, bright star, with that out of the way, then it becomes a much more manageable task. So h- how do we get that thing out there? We're, we're we, still working with unlimited money. Okay, we're working with unlimited money. Um, we have some more engineering problems to solve, but not too many more. We've been burning down our so-called tall pole list. And then we just, uh, what kind of list? We call it tall techno, uh, technology tall pole. It's the phrase where you have to figure out what are your hardest problems That's and awesome. then break those down to solve. So the starshade, one of the really hard problems was how to formation fly at tens of thousands of kilometers. It's like, wow, that is insane. And the team broke that down actually into a sensing problem. Because of the starshade, how do you see the starshade precisely enough to, to control it? Because if you're shining a flashlight, you know the beam spreads out. So if the starshade has a beacon, an LED or a laser, it's going to spread out so much by the time it gets to the telescope. The problem wasn't how do you tell the starshade how to move around fast enough to stay in a straight line. The problem was how do you how are you able to sense it well enough? So problems like that were broken down and money that came from NASA to solve problems is um, put towards solving it. So we're, we've are we got through most of the hard problems right now. Another one was that starshade, even though it's looking at a star, light from our own sun could hit the edges of the starshade and bounce off into the telescope, believe it or not. Hmm. And that would actually ruin it because we're trying to see this tiny, tiny signal. So then the question is, how do you make a razor thin edge? Like those petal edges would be like have to be like a razor. And what materials can you use? So there's a series of problems like that. So, wow, so there's yeah. a materials problem in there? Too? Some of them. Mm-hmm. Materials wow. problem. And there's one. So we <laughs> so cool. almost finished solving all those problems. And then it's just a matter of building one and testing it in a full-scale size facility. And then building the telescope. It's just a matter of time to build everything and get it get it up for launch. So this is an engineering? Close. Engineering, yeah. This close. is an engineering project. It's so- a real engineering project. Mm-hmm. I actually can tell you about two other projects that are not mine. Um, I like to call, call Starshade mine because it was my project that I helped make it mainstream, where that line is constantly shifting. When I started, when I got this leadership role on Starshade, I remember telling people about it. And it was definitely not on the mainstream OK line. It was on the giggle factor side of the line. The giggle factor. <laughs> and people would just laugh like, that's dead. Like, you can never formation fly. Or they'd say, why are you working on that? That's just so not... It's not this possible. is so awesome. There's a f- there's a few things you've done in your life, and I, that's when I first saw Starshade. I was like, "What, really?" And then like it sinks in. I mean, it's the same thing I felt with like Elon Musk or certain people who do crazy stuff. And, like it's like, and then and they get they actually make it work. I mean, if you get Starshade information flying to like together, I mean, how awesome is that? If you actually make that happen. Even like from a robot, I'm sorry, from the robotics perspective, even if it doesn't give us good data, that's mm-hmm. just like a cool thing to get out there. That's I mean, really it's cool. really exciting. Really cool. 